In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Seven, eight, nine, ten. This podcast goes to 11. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy, another episode. And today we find ourselves in the belly of New York City at our good friend's house, I Need More. It's not just his house, it's his life. And he's a worthy candidate of being in the trenches. Would you please welcome to the show, Jimmy Webb. Hello. Yo, thank you, Ryan. I was so <laughs> flattered and honored when you got in touch with me yesterday and asked me to do this. Well, I found myself, you know, coming up to New York City. We're doing this uh, thing tonight with Dennis Dunaway, original bass player of right. Alice Cooper. And he's doing a screening for his new video, Cold Cold Coffin, and a uh, film release for the uh, Live at the AstroTurf. And I've never seen traction for about 20 minutes of fame like that we spent at a, at a uh album store in uh, uh texas they've made a movie out of it they made eps out of it they made records so we're excited to go check out that screen tonight but that is in the future and of course we're going to get to the past but right now i want to talk about the present where we are right now we are at i need more this is your store yeah this is my baby this is like a part of my dream come true life because one thing about being in the trenches if you stay in the trenches long enough you will live a dream come true life. Being a survivor brings the most amazing blessings in the world. And we are in the belly of the beast. We're underground right now in this <laughs> pink rock and roll cave in the created by me. <laughs> but I got to tell you, it wasn't a stretch. Everything in here is just like my own apartment at home. I live underground. It's the same Jimmy Pink. And it's the same photos on the wall almost. Uh, there's no barbed wire in my home. It's a little more, but there's a lot of candlelight. So, <laughs> well, and when we were setting up for this, because those a lot of you are listening on the podcast, so you're not seeing it. If you want to see it, you got to go onto the YouTube channel and check it out. It is very colorful, and Jimmy was definitely set directing it at first. He was putting the props and the and the clothing around. So check out the YouTube video for it, because you will see some cool little subliminal advertising hints. There's a little Alice Cooper there. There's a little bit of I need more swag but then there's a lot of other cool artwork clothes all over the store you gotta come here to just to check it out i mean well, it really is it's becoming like it's more of an attraction wouldn't you say your store yes well i know how to condense let me start right there i ran away to new york city i was a 16 year old kid i ran away from a small town upstate i shoved everything i have into a stolen pillowcase <laughs> true story came to new york city without a penny in my pocket in 1975 not knowing anybody with everything condensed in that pillowcase so when you ask me to set up the whole store into one little backdrop I, yeah. I can easily do it all right i mean <laughs> When Jimmy, condense. when do you know, you know, you know how to condense. You just don't know how to use a condenser mic. No, not at all. Right? It's like, I'm knocking out, dancing with it, whatever. <laughs> so uh, the thing is, you know, a lot of times we do these podcasts, we do them via Skype. So there is a proximity of the microphone. But Jimmy's down here. We're at his story and he's excited to talk about it. So the, if, if you do hear some fluctuations in the volume, it's, it's just Jimmy flailing the mic around. Yeah, it's and me if, being if were, excited. Yeah, if he was yeah, a yeah. lead singer. Did yeah. you ever have any aspiration, dreams uh, to, to be in a band? No, never, ever, ever. And I have no musical talent and I have a terrible voice. I lip sync happy birthday at birthday parties because <laughs> my voice is so damn bad. I look good. I know I look good. But I did not want to be one of those guys that looks good and is terrible up there on stage. Because it's not about image, it's about truth. Like, you're a true musician. Well, thank you. When you're up there on stage, you're a total giver. And you look good. <laughs> From head to toe, you look good. Well, but it's bigger than that. Because when you play, you play true. And it's very, very real. You've helped me uh, keep looking rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can call it good, but I can call it rock and roll. You've helped me looking the way I look for so many years. Because we first initially met when you were up on St. Mark's Street. Right? Now you're a little job. bit more downtown, yeah, but yeah. you were at Trash Vaudeville for many, many years. Yeah. You started apparently... Just like you moved to New York City, you know, with a pillowcase, you kind of started there right. at, at the bottom and then worked right. your way right. up to basically the head honcho. And then you said, look, this is my dream. I'm going to make my own dream a reality. And you started your own store. 
Wow, you did your homework. Or you oh, know me a little well, bit of you pay attention. Our research guys yeah. do their homework, and then they give it to me, and then I just sound smart. So uh, yeah, yeah. And, and and it's true. I started at trash at seven or eight dollars an hour. I just kicked a really intense drug habit. I had a few years under my belt clean, and I was like, I'm gonna go live the dream. So I started this job, and I have a natural thing, you know, like you do for playing music or Slash on his guitar or Iggy being Iggy or Alice being Alice or Ewan McGregor, the actor, being Ewan McGregor. I have this talent for, like, uh, making dreams come true through clothes, making people happy, finding the soul and dressing it up. <laughs> and... Um, so I started at $7 an hour and it grew really, really big to people like you or Alice or Iggy. Like getting pants on Iggy, that's a feat. That's a challenge. You know what I, I mean? would say that would be a challenge. And that man even borrowed my very own personal pants and wore them. Okay? <laughs> so uh, yeah. that was a good thing you, to do. You, you, I mean, for those of you just listening again, you have to come and watch the visuals. Yeah, you, Jimmy does have uh, Iggy legs. Yeah. I would <laughs> say, I, I'd say you would. Have some uh, Iggy style pants, but we'll, we'll look at us. We're we're kind of yeah, we're yeah. matching well, we're in same. a very strange way own, today. Right in our you own know? way, right? Yeah. Your leopard skin is on your pants. My leopard skin yeah, is on yeah. here yeah. on my shirt. Well, so this is hot. This I don't is even good. know what animal that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something kind of crocodile. It is cro yeah, yeah, crocodile yeah, yeah. rock. Right. Yeah, crocodile rock. And and that's the thing when you come to the store down here at, at I Need More. Immediately, it's like the soundtrack of a really good rock show. Or, or do <laughs> even venture off to say a Goon Squad show? It's basically our set list. You know, I walked down to T Rex, and then after that, right after that, the Ramones were kicking in, and you know, which leads me to just a really quick question because you do own uh, a clothing store and you are into fashion. How do you feel about like when someone comes in and wears a Ramones shirt but doesn't know a single song? Is that is that a blessing, a curse? How do, how do you, how do you accept that, and how do you look at it in a fashion sense? That's that's wow, that's like a hard one. Um, it's, first of all, I think everyone should be able to have access to everything to learn. When I came here to this city in the seventies, and uh, and I didn't know anything about anything, I had to learn, but I learned my history along the way. If I heard, when I heard Take a Walk on the Wild Side, I wanted to know about it. I wanted to know about a Candy Darling. I wanted to know about a Hollywood Lawn. I wanted to know about a Lou Reed. So I got to know my history. You educated yourself. Right. Now, I think in this day of a stylist, you know, it's like on the set and filling a rack with MC5 and Ramon shirts and just shooting the cover of a magazine and something you don't know about. If you're not going to know after a while... I just think it's kind of lame. But I don't want to be such a purist that everybody doesn't have everything. I mean, look at Cindy Lauper, one of my girls and a very dear friend, right? You know, Cindy dancing down the street to girls just want to have fun in the 80s with that colored hair. Now, colored hair is available in Ohio. <laughs> That's rock and roll. That's awesome. That's progress. Yeah, right? I mean, you know? Yeah. Or I was looking up guys like you and I. I have this great fringe jacket upstairs that was made for me. And mine's all silver and a dirty silver and tinted in pink and lined in denim look at me i get excited like i'm talking dirty sex <laughs> when i talk about a leather jacket and it's like so rock and roll. and it's a five thousand dollar jacket so that's some damn good dirty sex okay <laughs> it's so rock and roll Expensive. and then i was looking up a picture of hendrix right and his fringe jackets which inspired this woman to make this coat and i was like but she knew her history now, I think if you're just jumping on the internet and you're just looking at a picture and you're copying the style, you're being covetous. And that being covetous is a sin. <laughs> so you don't do it. So if you don't know, you don't know. But once you start to know and things pique your interest, go out and study what you're wearing. You know yeah. what I mean? Learn your history. Chippy Webb, the new, the more you know. Uh, yeah, public public yeah. service uh, announcement. Go eat it. Digest it. Live it. Decide well, if you want it or not. It's you, all, know? you got it on YouTube right there. If you're watching yeah. this on YouTube right now, you got a search button. Yeah. Go check. If you don't know... If you can't name three Ramon songs right off the gate, right out of the gate, yeah. go educate yourself with some videos and stuff. And you, yeah. and you did drop a bunch of names earlier we were talking. Obviously, Alice Cooper. I have a close you know right. association with him i've been riding his coattails for years and actually borrowing his coattails because 
if you believe it or not, <laughs> I'm wearing Alice Cooper's pants on this current tour. See? Now that's history. <laughs> well, that's carrying it on. Yeah, I mean, I'm literally wearing his pants because when we started the tour, I was thinking I was going to go a little bit more Cindy Lauper. I was going to add some color. And Alice came in and said, look, we're going the whole band. We're going back in black. We're going basic black so and everybody's going to look more uniform. So everything's a bit more darker. So what do you got? And I said, uh, I got nothing right now, boss. And he goes, well, I had luckily for you. I have my whole wardrobe. You take the stuff. So I took a pair of his boots. I took a pair of his pants. Wow. I was able to mismatch some stuff. And what I found as with the black clothing and the whole band having that, the guitars themselves stick out more now. See, you know, oh. so it, it makes the guitars sort of the accessories now. And of course, you know, the kind of guitars I like to play old school Gibsons. I have a old, you know, a bunch of different Gibsons and strats. And I mean, guitars can be accessorized in, in, in this sense, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Right. Well, both you're wearing the guitar and the guitar is wearing you. And that's how it ended up working out. Right. Yeah, absolutely. How beautiful. And well, that's also the history repeating itself and carrying on what's real. You know, that's that's rock and roll. That's good. Well, you mentioned also you mentioned Slash because uh, I have association boy. with Slash. Yeah. He's actually uh, been uh, very helpful with the promotion of I Need More, with helping out the store. Yeah. And, you know, I know that Duff, I see a lot he of Duff posts. cut the ribbon with me opening day yeah. and their families. Yep. That's and he cool. still supports it a lot. Yeah, I, I just had Duff's daughters. She had to believe in the future. She just did her first clothing release line here. No. Yeah, and it was awesome. That's yeah. like this is passing the torch yeah, of rock and roll yeah, on to the next generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that, you know, Gilby Clark, my, my buddy Gilby yeah. Clark, his daughter now, Frankie B, she plays so good she too. plays in a band now. So She's there so is good. this evolution of, so of uh, kids playing rock and roll in that vein that very right. same vein that we like it do you find okay this is something i want to move to a lot of people and audience members that come to our alice cooper shows we see these generational uh audiences where where it's grandparents parents and now the kids uh -huh. it's because their parents were playing that music for them do you find that same with the fashion where sometimes kids are wearing what their parents are wearing, whereas it used to be totally the opposite where they wouldn't listen like like the kids wouldn't listen to their parents music. They are now are, are kids actually dressing like their parents. Yeah. And I find it amazing. And I love that what you just said, because that's sharing, but allowing as long as you're allowing your kids to be kids, but to have that honesty and to pass it on, I think it's amazing. Like when you just mentioned who's in the audiences at your show, I was just out on the road with Slash for like 24, 48 hours. Whenever I can get away with him, I go away with him. And I was looking at the audience and it was so many ages, just like you said, yeah. the father and the son and the kid would be like 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. You know, and then the grandparents, and it was awesome. It was beautiful. Or I was just in Athens, Greece with Iggy at a festival, and to see the broad range of love. I mean, Iggy's the king of kings. Yeah. I just saw the stones, too. That was a bit of an older crowd, but there was diversity there, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know well, what think I mean? Of, and again, think of how many people wear that tongue right. and have no idea where it's from. Right. Now go educate yourself on the Rolling Stones tongue. If you're wearing a tongue on your shirt right now, <laughs> go educate yourself. Yeah, right? if you're an H and M and you're buying it, figure that shit out, dude. Like, <laughs> go learn something. All right. There's a reason it's there. They took it for a reason, and it's there. So you better know it. When you were talking about people, my boys that work here right now, and I notice, and I do the same thing. I notice if they want to know a song, MC Five was on the other day, and it was kind of funny. One of them came barreling upstairs and ran over and like looked at the computer it was Manny who works here dude and he's like looking up the MC5 song and it was awesome you know what I mean it's like ah well, a guy that wants to know his history guess you know? what it just so happens that we are touring with MC50 <sighs> it's coming up in the UK we're doing a whole a whole UK tour with Alice Cooper MC50 and the Stranglers so if you're watching this and you're listening to it right now uh, perhaps that tour is just about ready to start how awesome is that dude or, and Wayne Kramer is the shit and he's and he still is doing such it, an right? awesome guy yeah. he's such an awesome he and his wife both they're like just amazing human people Beams. Do you find that there is this sort of similarities between the Detroit rock scene and the New York City rock scene? Absolutely. Yeah, you, absolutely. Because it seems that you dig on that type Absolutely. of vibe yeah. as well. Absolutely. Because it's um, 
I mean, when they use the sense dirty, dirty means good. Dirty means you're down in the dirt. You know, dirty means you're willing to fall down in the trenches and get up. Mm -hmm. You're willing to fight it out. It's willing to be real. And then the more you're dirty, the longer you're in the dirt, the more pure you become. (laughs) You see the stars brighter in the sky. You want to reach for them. You want to live them. You want to swing from them. But you got to be willing to go to the trenches to see and feel the stars. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes totally a lot of sense. sense. Uh, with Iggy Pop, he yep. helped you. He helped you in the sense that he actually helped you name the store, or how did the he, whole name of the store? Yeah, I the name of the store did come from Iggy, and then I realized, oh shit, my lawyer was just like, "You better get a note from Iggy." It's like he's a kind of attached to that. So he wrote an amazing note to my lawyer, and he is my soulmate. He's my guiding life. If there were to be, I have a big, big, big ass soundtrack to my life. Big. But the man that played the tune I, I'm going to cry, <laughs> listened to the most was Iggy. Right. Iggy songs were with me all the way to the gutter and all the way back. So he's wow. very, very right. special to me, so you know, but, uh, he's helped, uh, he's yeah. helped uh, on the, on the way down to yeah. the way up and every, it's a roller coaster <laughs> though, right? Everything's a roller coaster. Just like walking up and yeah. down the stairs of your store. It's, it, it's, it's a ride, you know, every jail cell I was in or every mental, mental institution I was in to get to the other side, I had to listen to an Iggy song <laughs> and they've kept me on the other side. I got you. Well, and that's a true story, you know? That's not even an exaggeration. So, but, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, and the license, it's funny, when I was just in Greece with Iggy, if you ever told me I would be side stage with Iggy Pop in Athens, Greece, you know what I mean? Watching him, being my boy, feeling that energy, I would have told you you were out of your mind, you know, but it happened. You know what I mean? And, like this store happened. And that's where I need more comes from. You know, you know what made I need more really happen? I was at Carnegie Hall with Iggy, right? And there's, and I was, you know, it was like the third time I was there with him. He was doing that save Tibet thing, the thing that saves monks, Mm -hmm. you know, in Tibet and whatever. And there I am watching my boy, Iggy Pop, up on stage at Carnegie Hall, where Billie Holiday stood, where Judy Garland stood. Where Liza Minnelli stood, where every great in the world stood, right? And played the most amazing sound in America, New York's Carnegie Hall. And there's Iggy being Iggy, all shirtless and shit, (laughs) singing with New Water. And I'm like, oh my God, it's time for me to leave what I'm doing and find my own Carnegie Hall. Reach for that star higher in the sky. You know what I mean? Stay shirtless. Stay in the trenches. Stay who you are. But, you know, fight that battle. But reach for something really hard. Mm. And the high. And the next day, I went in, gave notice at my job, and just left it off. Yeah. That's and a this good... happened a year later, you know? And and now it's been two years later. Or right. is it, how long has it been now? Since 2017? It's been a year and a half. Yeah. year and a half. So well, going, coming up on a couple years. years since I quit, but it took a year for this to become a fruition. And I didn't even know I was going to do this. It was Ewan McGregor one night. He was, Jimmy, I was going to do a kid show, you know, because I love kids, right? I teach them all about rock and roll and life and how to be what other, whatever color crayon they you're the, are. You're the crayon. Yoda of fashion yeah, rock yeah, and roll. Yeah, let's do it, right? <laughs> hmm. And then Ewan one night at dinner was just like, Jimmy, I think you need to do clothes. You're really good at clothes. Bingo. Again, what does Ryan Roxy do? He plays guitar. He plays rock and roll. You find you find right? that door that, that you're supposed to walk through, right. and then things seem, at least right. for me, when you do find that right door for you. Because I've, I've opened a lot of doors over the years, and and some doors weren't for me, whether it was a, whether it was a, a certain band or whether it was a certain right. venture that I was going off to. But I kept coming back to playing guitar because that was the easiest door for that would always swing wide open, and I'd be play, able to play gigs, and it seemed didn't seem like a job so much. And, and in that sense, when you find that right door, whatever you're doing, it doesn't seem so much like a job or work. Am I correct? There you go. You exactly. Know? Exactly. And you got to be right. It doesn't, because you're getting to do what you love. It's a lot of work, but it's not work at all. And now look what you're doing, you know, because we stay contemporary. A podcast, do we know what a podcast was years <laughs> ago? You know what I mean? But you're doing it. So you're giving to the world. You opened up a new door and you're doing it, Ryan. I, I appreciate having. World. 
a bit longer term conversations with people now and especially that are in similar situations. I always try to look for the guests that I have to come on the show to be in sort of similar <laughs> positions. Either they've been riding the coattails like I have and wearing the coattails like I have of, of Alice Cooper, uh, of this iconic guy, or they've just been grinding it out and working and, you know, year after year, uh, filing their taxes as a musician or as whatever it is that they're good at doing. And you obviously are good at fashion. So that's what you've been doing. I mean, uh, this is so amazing that you're saying that because simultaneously, I am thinking of you and I am thinking of you. You're always willing to learn. You're always open. It's like learning. Wow. I'm going to use it in the story here, too. If I wear if I change it up again and I grow or whatever, I evolve. If I try something different and I wear all black, the guitar will show up more. Yeah. What a great analogy for a great way to change and add to your life to change it up, to do something new. And you'll find something positive in whatever, right. whatever. change. Exactly. You know, ever exactly. change. What do you see happening? Because I noticed that the racks of clothing that are around the store, around I Need More, it, do you have different designers from all over? Or how does that work yeah, where well, clothes come into the store? When I wanted to do this one, I wanted to do it different from my old job. I didn't want to have it like... Um, uh, uh, like the same kind of thing. And this day of the internet, everything is so accessible. So a lot of people came to me because I couldn't afford to manufacture clothes. That's so expensive, at least in the beginning. Now I'm doing, I did your classics. You always need a great leather jacket. You pick the best. I picked Shaw at another great company, Straight to Hell and Up and Coming. He was a kid when he started. He was silk screening t-shirts. So he was the real deal. He had worked hard. So I picked his leather jackets and classics, and I wanted T-shirts and belts. But then I'm like, I want rock star clothes. I want like $2,000 sequin jackets. I want, I had this discount universe line. It's completely sold out again. I was the only store in the world they, those two girls allowed it in. They were walking by, they're like, what's going to go on there? I want to know what's going on there, because they covered the the uh, windows with leopard while I was building it, not your typical brown paper. No, no, no. And they're like, what's on the other side of that door? And they came in and they saw the pink, and I was like, oh, I heard about you, so their clothing line was here. So what I wanted here blended with your classics, your typical good belts and stuff. I wanted something that you didn't have anywhere else, and I want to keep evolving and changing it. But you got to throw in your classic. I mean, I just threw in some vinyl pants. You got to have vinyl pants. It's kind yeah. of like what we the way that we look at the Alice Cooper set in a sense because this tour we're going deep in a lot of the songs. You, uh, I don't know if you're coming to the show. Yeah, I'm uh, coming tomorrow night. Okay, I talked great. to Alice and Cheryl the other day. Yeah. That's great. That's great that you're coming because you'll get to see yeah. some like a song like My Stars, which we've never done since I've been in the band. Since 96, yeah. off and on in the band, we've never been able to play that song live. It's always kind of gotten up to the final cut and then it got cut in set list previous. So we're doing a lot of deep cuts on this set, but you have to play those classics. I mean, you have to play it no Mr. Nice Guy. You have to have, you know, <laughs> yeah. a, 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 an 18 and the school's out and a poison because those are obviously the ones that that people are hearing on the radio all the time as well. And they're kind of the ones that people, if they do know an Alice Cooper song and they and they have a picture of Alice Cooper on their T-shirt that they bought from H&M, that's the song they might know. Right? right, no, and you're right. It's like, like I have to have a leather jacket in a rock and roll clothing store. And I heard you changed it up a lot. And then Cheryl was like texting me. She goes, new show, new show. And I was thinking this morning as I was playing like Iggy at Homer, and I was thinking of you guys, and you were coming today, and I'm excited about tomorrow. And I'm like, but you always, like Slash always has to play either Night Train or Sweet yeah, Child of Mine. Of course, of course. And Guns N' Roses totally has to play it, or yeah. Paradise, or Iggy does have to do I Want to Be he's Your gonna wear the Or he's going to wear the right, top right, hat right, at, at right, one right, point right, in the show, right. just like Alice is going to have the eye makeup. There's certain things that are tradition that I, lo I love about it, but... Like you adding said, the new, you have to add the new. Add a little wrinkle in it, add a little twist in it, and it, it makes things different. So. And I love the upcoming tour you're talking about. One thing I want to tell you all out there during this podcast, <laughs> and this is called In the Trenches, people think it's all glamorous and great, and it is. Being, being on tour, being a musician and giving to the world the way Ryan does or Alice does or whoever, Iggy, Slash, Duff, Debbie, Harry. I'm with them a lot, too. 
and um, they all give, give, give. And that's the most important thing you need to know. They're out there on stage for whatever it may be for an hour or an hour and a half or sometimes two to two and a half to three giving, giving us everything they've got inside. You feel it. I've witnessed it. But then you watch what happens after. Dude, they're back there. They're on a bus. I've been on your tour bus. I was there with you and Chuck one day, and I needed 11 cents, and you both offered me 11 cents. That was so our never... investment to I need more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, my God. They each they invested 11 we cents. Are, we are minor investors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, whatever. We are, we this are, is awesome. I, I don't want to. I, right. we, we kind of like to remain anonymous. Oh, my God. You're we're, right. We're like anonymous awesome. investors. We're eight, we're, I guess we're angel donors. Is yeah, that what you exactly. call it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Which proves my point. Then you're on a bus. Then you're on to the next city. You're eating the chip out of the cabinet the cabinet or the or the or a banana or whatever and the bus drivers are usually great i love slash's bus driver right but then you're on to the next city or your bed's not that big so to give that much it's not not that glamorous it's honey it's not sex drugs and rock and roll in 2019 it's no. a lot of work, you know what I mean. But but it's worth it for that. There you go. Ninety minutes to two hours there that you're you on go. stage, and and when you're having a good night and everything's falling into place, you know the guillotine's coming down with a clean slice. The uh, the catapult just gets you know tossed the right way. I I nail a, a solo that I I've been tripping up on the last couple of shows. When when all those perfect storm comes together and everybody's all the background vocals are on key and, and in lock together because we because we don't use uh we don't use any tracks you know, know the only I tracks like that we ever do with this uh alice cooper band that. there's just some there's intros to certain songs or some uh sound effects you know obviously when the when alice gets his head cut off which he does not get his head cut off kids don't worry <laughs> uh there is a sound that sounds like it but those are the only things that we use as far as samples but all our background vocals all our guitars all all the instruments everything is live and it's a challenge but it's also a very big reward when things do go right how amazing is that alice cooper and the entire band does not cheat you know <laughs> i'm not saying it's cheating but many many do and i notice the older guys iggy doesn't debbie sings like I, i've seen everybody gives 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 slash doesn't know what in that band does but your band's amazing like everyone oh, in nice. the alice cooper band right now you are a kick-ass purist real deal rock and roll this people. lineup's pretty on point i it, must say it's the most consistent lineup that that we've had that i've been a part of because uh, we've been a we've been playing together for as many years as we have uh, tommy hendrickson and myself we you know we call ourselves the bookends because i'm on far right. stage right he's mm -hmm. on far stage left mm -hmm. we sort of sort of hold those uh parts in place and neat as a hurricane she's Woo! she's jamming Killer. around everywhere Killer. and then of course chuck makes everybody look out of shape next to him right because, <laughs> because he's know, got the body of adonis me. right yeah. and um and then, of course, there's Glenn Sobel. He's a machine. Right. And uh, then we got stop. Uh, nice Alice little Cooper. Man who's, in the back. Yep. who's that guy, Alice Cooper? Who's right. that guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the, he's the legend. So that's where I like to – that's my happy space. And obviously, you know, I need more – here on the lower east side of new york city that's your happy place right absolutely and absolutely. do you do you travel that much out of new york city these days or are you pretty no, much i love new york it's my favorite i'm so fortunate to live here it's my favorite place in the world to be I Since do, 1975, when you came down here with that pillowcase, there was you haven't lived in any other city? Mm -mm. I didn't even leave for like 20 years. I would go back and try to visit my parents once in a while. But that didn't work out Wait, too well. well you but. didn't leave up. You didn't leave the city. Like you're saying, you no, didn't. I didn't leave the city <laughs> when I needed to go to like regroup what I call rehab. I would try Brooklyn or Queens for a while, but that didn't even work out too well. And Staten Island was like by boat or something like he that. He didn't that even, even leave the happen. borough, folks. Yeah, dude. <laughs> dude Manhattan, <laughs> Manhattan all the way. I'm a New York City boy. Now, as I grew up and when I worked so much, and even when I was at my old job or here, like even when I was at Trash when I met you, I worked like five to seven days a week, you know, always. Six, six all the time. And here I try to work five or six. I did get fortunate enough that Slash, God bless him, 
like he would say like come meet me in paris or come meet me in nottingham england that was pretty cool or so you're taking downloads. a few trips outside yeah yeah, yeah yeah but i but i gotta come back here and when i come back here let me look at me i'm getting all excited <laughs> like coming back to new york for me Coming back to New York was like the first time I came with those clothes in a pillowcase. It's the most magical, wonderful, amazing, gorgeous, diverse place in the world. It is like a city of euphoria. It's so incredible. This has turned Dude. into a tourist, yeah, uh, yeah, like, like sort a of uh, uh, an amazing tourist yeah. advertisement yeah. for the city yeah, of yeah. New York, which I don't even think it needs. It's because changed everyone... a lot. You know, it's a rich city now. Yeah, yeah. You know, it used to be really poor and very, very diverse, uh, more diverse, but it's still the city where it all happens. I'll... If you want your dreams to come true and you're willing to fight for it, but you got to work, you got to go to the trenches. No. That's one thing. Youth today, they want the glamour without the trenches. No, no. It's kind of weird. We're, like, we're here huh? to. We're still. We're here to educate. <laughs> we're here to educate. Pass the torch on to rock and roll. The Yoda of rock and roll clothing. The Yoda of rock and roll guitar. We will. We will educate you along with that YouTube search button, and we will get you guys understanding what the hell T-shirt you are wearing. How about that? And, and if someone wants to find out a little bit more about I Need More, uh, where are they going to find you? Because I mean, honestly. Honestly, the, I, I can't think of a better way to wrap this up because I'm excited to go be in New York and walk the streets now because I, I, we've been on tour yeah. around the States and now this is my one day in New York. I love sitting here talking to you, but guess what? Now, no, now you made me excited to go see city, the city baby. energy. Go out and feel that city. <laughs> go out and live this city. Live it all the way. Live your dream come true life right here in New York, even if it's for just 24 hours. But I'll tell you, it's like tasting the best ice cream or drug in the world. <laughs> New York City is the best drug in the world. How do you find right. out? And come to I Need More. I'll give you love. <laughs> I'll educate you. And so will my staff, hopefully. Um, <laughs> no, they will. Or they won't be here very long. So come here. Uh, and have How are they going to find out? How are they going to find you? What you're going to really do? I'm building the web page. So give me time on that. I'm old school, right? But I would. how you would find out about what it's about it's through two ways. Besides coming to 75A Orchard Street in New York City and asking the history of this block and feeling the love, I would go to the Instagram because the Instagram or the Jimmy Webb Instagram, the Jimmy Webb NYC at, oh, that's what you have to do. Jimmy Webb NYC. See, that's I good. Know, no technology. Or I need more, right? Or the it's I at X need X more okay. because you will feel the love. Like everything, I do that alone. People say, oh, do you have a staff? No. Why would I let anybody talk for me? Would you let anybody take your guitar and play for you? There is nobody better to promote <laughs> I need more than right? Jimmy Webb. So I'm telling you right now. So what I say and know it's all true mm -hmm. and come and come feel the love. That's it. You are uh, like you said, a giver. You're, you're, you're about New York love. You're about rock and roll love. And you are about uh, passing on the torch of rock to the next generation. So thank you so much for coming on in the thank trenches, you. Jimmy. Um, I appreciate it. It's now time for me to go get out of here and walk the streets. Yeah, not before I go check out of all these racks of beautiful clothing. And uh, thank you, everybody, for thank watching you. and listening to uh, In the Trenches podcast. If you want to find more episodes, you can check out all the information that is below on your screen right now. Or you can just uh, go to my Instagram, which is at Ryan Roxy, and uh, or just put that magic Google search in. Ryan Roxy, or if you want, yeah, I Google. need more clothing. Yeah, I need more clothing, NYC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way, thanks again for uh, listening to another episode of In the Treasures with Ryan Roxy. Jimmy Webb, thank you for being on. We'll see you later next time. And remember to reach for the stars. You have to be in the trenches. So start <laughs> right here in Ryan Roxy's In the Trenches. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, man. <laughs>